Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Um, we're moving on to hems today. So here I have um, the four different examples of the hems you're gonna do, and these are the complete ones. Um, so one of the examples is going to be a hem with a surged edge and what we call a top stitch. So I'll talk about top stitching. Um, through this demo, but it's important that when you're hemming something, because it's what everyone's going to see, so this would be, let's say, at the bottom of your shirt, maybe at the bottom of your pants, um, because it's going to be seen when you're wearing it, you want to make sure that you do it from the outside. So when we top stitch, we stitch from the top or the face or the pretty side of the fabric. So this is one of the examples. This is an easy one. Again, it's called a serge with the top stitch finish. So that's one of the samples that we'll do. Sorry about the wiggly camera. Um, another one that we're gonna do is we're gonna do a top stitch, but instead of surging the inside of the raw edge, we're gonna do a self-clean finish by folding it. So this one kind of reminds me of the self-clean seam finish. It's a very similar. So again, it does have a top stitch, so it's a little hard to see, but it's top stitched here. And on the back side, instead of having a surge, we're gonna uh, fold it twice. So that's another one we'll do. Um, we're gonna do what's called a blind hem. Now, if your machine does not have a blind hem, then let me know, and then I'll give you a different option of a different type of hem that you can do. Um, it'll be just a different type of a hand stitch instead. Um, but this one's great. So what it is, it's a surged edge or a finished edge. If you don't have a serger. And then it has this weird, funky kind of like a zigzag stitch. So I know it's a little hard to see, but it's got like this weird kind of like straight line with a zigzag. But then from the outside, it's pretty much invisible. So if you look here and here, hard to see, but there's a couple bigger ones that I kind of made on purpose so you could see that they're larger. This is really great. It's like an invisible stitch done by machine. So it's really, really fast. This one's called the blind hem. And then lastly, we're gonna do one hand sewn hem. And this one's called a slip stitch. This is another blind hem, meaning that you cannot see any of the thread from the outside, but this one is sewn by hand, so it definitely takes a lot longer than the one done by machine. So you'll kind of see that I have this part unfinished, so I have my hand needle there and then my pins, but the remainder of this is already closed off and I can't get my finger in there, I can't pull it. If I pull hard enough, you can somewhat see that there's stitches there that I did by hand. This one is actually really, really beautiful when you do it correctly and it's really safe. So as you can see, no thread on the inside, no thread whatsoever on the outside. It's a gorgeous invisible hem. So this is something that's really nice for, let's say trousers, uh, maybe if you have a really pretty dress or skirt that you're making. So this is a great option if you want to take some extra time um, with your hem. But if you want to do kind of the same thing and make it faster, then the blind hem works really well. So as you can see here, there's four different samples. Um, they're all gonna require um, a six by six piece. So I'm gonna show you here. I've cut six by six pieces. I have four of them and I've prepared two of them already. What we're doing is we're doing a one inch hem depth. And the reason why I have you do a specific one inch hem depth is because this is a very straight piece of fabric. So um, if you read through the module, you'll know that there's a rule of thumb when it comes to hemming. You can make a really deep hem. So let's say you want to make a really big hem. If you have a very straight bottom of the garment or bottom of the item. So let's say you're making a t-shirt. If you're making a t-shirt, eh, that's about this kind of a shape. You could go really deep, an inch, two inches, three inches. You can go really deep with it because it's very straight. If, however, you have something that's curved. So if you have a curvy piece of fabric, and I'm just going to pull out this curvy piece of paper to show you as an example. If you have a curvy piece of fabric, it's really hard to do a deep hem depth because as you go to fold it, just like with fabric on paper, it starts to do this weird like crimping thing where it just has a really hard time kind of taking the larger part of the circle and compressing it into a smaller area. So if you try to do a really deep hem on something that's curved, you get this really messy, bulky hem. So with things that are really curvy, we work with a very narrow, really shallow hem. And the reason for that is because we have the ability when it's really shallow or narrow to work it in without causing that bulk. So this, if I flip this over, 
this still looks nice from the outside because it is so small and so narrow. Okay, so that's something just to keep in mind. You can do, I'm sorry again for the camera. Um, you can do a deep, deeper hem when it comes to your um, straight hems, and you need to do a narrow hem when it comes to your more curvy hems. So what I've done is I've prepared one um, sample with a just one inch fold. Okay, you're gonna need two of them like this. So I did one so you can kind of see it already ready to go, but you're gonna need a second one like that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take this other piece here. I'm gonna fold it up. I'm gonna use my seam gauge and I'm gonna press up one inch, okay? And I have my ironing board right here, so I'm just gonna press it real quickly. you'll see that I now have a one inch hem. So you're gonna need two samples like that, okay? Just use your seam gauge. Once you've pressed it, go ahead and take your pins and go ahead and pin them just to kind of hold it in place for now. We're gonna do something to the raw edge, but just for now, just to kind of hold it there. So I'm just gonna put a couple pins, nothing too fancy. Again, on this one, since it's already prepared, and I just wanna hold it like that. I'm just gonna put a single pin right here just to hold it in place. Now I have another one over here that's prepared and I need two like this sample. These two samples are going to be folded an inch. So there is a one inch fold here total. So the, there's an initial fold of one inch, but I'm gonna fold down the raw edge. I'm not gonna surge it or anything. I'm just gonna fold it down. So you can see that now I folded the raw edge down a quarter of an inch. So what you should end up with is you should end up with three quarters kind of showing in the background. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, again, I'm gonna do this in kind of two steps. I'm gonna fold a quarter inch first. Okay, so quarter inch. I'm gonna take this to my iron. And then I'm gonna go three quarters of an inch after this. And again, this is going to give me a three, I'm sorry, it's going to give me a one full inch total. Now, you want to make sure that you're doing what the pattern calls for. If you aren't, and let's say you're just willy-nilly, just hemming it whatever you want. The problem there is that, let's say you have a mini skirt or shorts, you know, shorter shorts, not, not longer shorts it could get to the point where they're too short way too short just because you didn't you know pay attention while you were pressing it another thing that could happen is if you hem something too short um is sorry um it could change the overall look of the garment so you just have to make sure that you're paying attention to what your pattern calls for with the hem depth i said it in the module but uh, make sure to go back the actual depth of the hem so the amount that they want you to press that bottom edge up that is written on the actual pattern piece most of the time. So it's not written on the instructions, but it's actually written on the paper pattern. So if you have, let's say, a skirt pattern, at the bottom of the paper skirt, at the bottom it'll say, allowed five eighths of an inch hem, or given one inch hem, or two inch hem. So it'll say it on the bottom of the paper. That's kind of confusing for most people because um, we're not used to that. We're used to uh, most of the instructions being on the instruction sheet. So if you're confused by that, check out your pattern it should be on there again i'm just putting some pins in here to hold it in place now so i have my four samples already i'm going to start with the two easier ones so i'm going to start with the two top stitch ones and then i'll move on to the more difficult ones so i'm going to start with the top stitch with a surge and then the top stitch with a clean finish i'm going to work on those first now if you don't have a serger that's okay you can always use a zigzag you can use um, your overcast stitch you can use whatever you have available to you you just have to make sure that this edge is finished so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use my over lock or overcast stitch so i'm going to go ahead and open up my machine i'm going to pop out my number two foot sorry and i'm going to just switch my foot real quickly here 
I'm going to go ahead and hit my number four because that's my overcast stitch. And I'm going to unpin my folded fabric just so I can have access to the raw edge only. Okay, so I'm just going to unfold it for just a minute. So hopefully the crease stays there. And I'm just going to do that little overcast stitch just along the edge real quickly. And I should have gone back a little further. I started a little too far in, so I'm not going to have a totally surged edge. So make sure that you're starting all the way from the edge. That was my mistake. And again, this one's meant to go over the edge of the fabric. It's a special foot for my machine. Your owner's manual will tell you whether yours requires a different foot. Started a little bit further in. Okay, so now I have my finished edge. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin it. I'm going to pin this down now because it's finished, it's no longer raw. Now I can do my top stitch. So I want to make sure that I'm still pinning perpendicular to my stitching line. And I want my balls to be on the outside because to top stitch, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to stitch from this side of the fabric. So from the side of the fabric that you can't really see. So I know that seems kind of strange, but again, it's a per it's purposeful. It's because you're going to see this part when you wear these pants or shorts or whatever they are. Um, and so you want to make sure that this looks really nice and clean. So I'm just going to switch my foot back real fast put my standard foot back on and what I want to do is I want to make sure that I know where my stitch is going to land so right now my fabric is folded a full inch so I'm going to go back to a full inch okay my fabric is folded at an inch now if I were to use the one inch mark on my throat plate I wouldn't catch the edge of my fabric so if I came and I used this one inch marking all the way out here to stitch my fabric what would happen was that my thread would land really really close to the edge or on the edge and it wouldn't really hold it in place i don't want to do that so i want to move an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the hemline so i'm going to go one eighth of an inch away which is seven eighths of an inch so i know it's kind of a weird measurement seven eighths is where we're going to top stitch and that is the line my second line from the end you may not have that marker on your machine, so just get your seam gauge out. You can just line it up with the hole that your needle falls into, and you can just make a little mark on your machine if you need to. Otherwise, now that I know that I'm at 7 eighths, I'm gonna go from the very, very end, and I'm gonna stitch this. Just a regular stitch, making sure to back stitch. You want this to stay put, because this is a hem. You don't want it to fall out on you. Pull those pins out as you get to them. <laughs> and I'm gonna back stitch now. Okay, so pretty easy. Go ahead and clip my threads real short, and then I'll let you see. Do I have to cry? No, 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 you don't have to be that quiet. Okay, so now you can see, nice, pretty, straight stitch. Looks really good from the outside. If I flip it to the inside, oh, I got a little bit of a, my, uh, just my starting thread. That's why it's important to kind of hold your threads down when you start sewing, so that that doesn't happen. So that was a mistake on my part. I should have held them down better. Um, but that was an easy one to kind of could just remove it easily. But finished edge, stitch across. You're not gonna be able to, okay, you're not gonna be able to get into it. So really clean, really nice. If this was in if this was in yellow thread it would look great because it would match perfectly okay so that one's easy top stitch with a serge or um, some type of a finished edge now I'm gonna do the same thing on this one that I've already prepared that has two folds the self clean finish so now the only difference is that instead of having an inch exposed I have 
three quarters of an inch exposed. So when I flip this over and go to stitch it, I can't stitch at three quarters or else it won't catch it. So I'm gonna push it to the next closest measurement, an eighth of an inch away, and that gives me five eighths. So the nice thing about that is that, well, we already have five eighths marked on our machine. So I'm gonna take my folded fabric and I'm just gonna run it up against that five eighths of an inch. Hold my threads back, make sure you're holding them. I'm gonna go ahead and back stitch because I want this to stay put. When you're hemming something, it's usually um, like a tube, so it doesn't uh, always require a back stitch, but it definitely requires an overlap of the stitches. But for samples like this, please back stitch um, just to get in the habit of locking those stitches in. Coming up on my needle, I'm gonna get rid of that. Keep watching that 5 8 line, and I'm gonna back stitch. short also okay so this one very similar it is a top stitch with a self clean edge so from this side looks nice nice and clean 5 8 straight line from this side again nice and clean and because I use really good measurements I am NOT losing or exposing that second fold everything's still caught and I can't get my fingers under there so this one again nice and easy you can finish these off with a nice good hard press just to kind of solidify that folded edge. Okay, now I'm going to move on to the more difficult ones. This one's a little bit more difficult. This one is a blind hem. So the first thing I want to do is I want to finish off this raw edge. So again, if you don't have um, an overcast stitch, I'm just going to do a zigzag right now. So I'm going to just set my machine up for a zigzag. And I'm just going to zigzag my raw edge because, I'm sorry, I don't have a serger, let's say. And I'm going to start from the very edge, and I'm just going to work my way across. 